everyone is talking about Gen AI, as you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Big, um, I would say, buzzword. It would be interesting to hear um, also from uh, you, uh, what are the top maybe Gen AI use cases, areas of where you're applying Gen AI at Merck? So yes, I indeed, everyone is talking about it. One area is definitely knowledge management. Yeah, I agree. Others are very simple in operations, tech transfers, knowledge mm -hmm. transfers, which mm -hmm. is also similar to knowledge uh, transfer or knowledge management. But also you can start generating documents out of it. Some of the colleagues have been thinking about, can I generate SOPs? Mm -hmm. Very simple, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. super time consuming. You know, the program we called Smart Factoring. And the reason why we called it Smart Factoring is because it's replacing the word Manu Factoring mm -hmm. with the word Smart. So if we can help people to be more productive, to be faster in what they achieve by getting a tool in hand that yes, I still need to check. And that's exactly what we see with Gen AI is an experimenting world. Yes, large language models, it's a great stuff. I'm surprised what it all can do. Now generating videos mm -hmm. for generating trainings mm -hmm. is another field of area. Um, or even generating, um, yeah, uh, new content out of these documents or of the knowledge is a field that we're experimenting at the moment as well. And we see quite some value but still need to be validated. And of course, of we course. have colleagues that are validating the business logic, the outcomes. And I'm sure that if we are here in a year from now, we'll definitely see the first use cases with a higher impact of these. In the GMP uh, environment, right? Yes. As you said, everything which is not GMP, it's easier to explore. Everything which is related to manual work, reporting, right? Reporting. Exactly. Uh, doing tech transfers, I mean, a regulatory field, right, where you need to uh, create a lot of reports, there is an absolute value in doing that. Agreed. Right? At least that is the immediate. Yes, as immediate, as exactly. immediate fix. Or and then, I mean, going forward, I mean, there is, uh, right, uh, one of the Gen, uh, Gen AI or ChatGPT type of exercises or things that you can do is text to picture, right, mm -hmm. or text mm -hmm. to video. Exactly. But uh, is there not a future where we can uh, just add a text and we can get insights on how to create better molecules, right? How does the future look like? This is exciting. Now, maybe if I'm turning it a bit and spicing up a bit uh, okay. the, our discussion, let's try it. How, let's, let's see how it try. works. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what would you say in future? Would we have only data scientists and coder? No work, no operators anymore. <sighs> um, <laughs> I would say that we have operators that can code. So, I would say that the the definition of data scientist today and coder today may evolve mm -hmm. into today working without a computer, without any electronic device, or having no mobile phone at all is not thinkable anymore. Mm -hmm. And so the future will also change in the way we can operate um, with new capabilities. So operators will get new capabilities, and that might be a similar way of coding. It might be no code, low code. But it still might be coding. I agree. It's more I than agree. a sentence. I'm yeah, sorry for that. No, it's good, it's good. <laughs> no I mean, and, and the opposite, uh, it's a provocative question is, as we know, I mean, uh, low-code, no-code platform are getting more and more popular. Also, Gen AI is replacing some basic, uh, let's say, uh, coding, right? Uh, I know many people which are asking for codes, ChatGPT. So the question is, do we have in future a need of data scientists or actually this will be replaced by ChatGPT-like uh, solutions? I see this evolving in a way that is impressive, what it can, but it also shows that there is, if you don't have a clue, you can't check. So I still believe that mm, you should have people that are excellent and expert on what this is all about. In, in a nutshell, I think we need all experts in certain areas, even understanding ChatGPT better and the models behind it, and anything else that describes the mathematics behind models and that is evolving as well as we know we definitely need experts do we need all of them being like this no i don't believe that mm -hmm. but i believe that needs a good balance and not switching from one extreme to another extreme it needs a good balance of understanding the quality control if you will and evolve evolution and the innovation of these fields that requires or may require that expertise and others 
that, including myself, you may not have all of the details, but enough to understand what it requires to transform operations with the, and I believe that is something that needs to be added as a skill set in the future. Um, using ChatGPT is accessing knowledge, unstructured, structured, all of this. Now, the limitation now is your imagination. The limitation is actually the way you combine the questions to trigger a certain prompt. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, you, the way you engineer the answer is your creativity. So the, the beauty in the future will be how can you ask the right questions, how can you mm -hmm. do the right prompt engineering to get the results to where you want to. Because yeah. the knowledge is there. So that adds a change um, of how we will be operating in the future, I guess. Yeah, I agree. So basically, we will not uh, see a replacement of, uh, say, human, right? But rather um, advancement in skill sets, yes, right? Absolutely, That's yes. what we will see. Uh, another provocative question. Do lean first and then digital? What do you think about it? Huh. Um, yes, I mean, <laughs> so it, it, there are two different things. So lean, uh, lean Six Sigma, th this is a mindset. A digital as a, as a tool, as a capability, as technology, if you will, all of this, depending how you define it, it might be even a, a mindset as well, complementary to each yes. other. Uh, and what I mean with that is, mm, for me, digital is an enabler of the next generation operations excellence, right? So operations excellence with methodologies and the process that we learned, a lot of the tool sets, helped us to get where we are today. And I think this is great, by the way, right? We should definitely celebrate us for what we achieved so far as an industry. Now, digital adds capability that, that will level up even this level where we are at the moment. And so that it's not contradicting. Mm -hmm. It's actually complementing. Agree, agree. Um, maybe last question. Um, I mean, you know a bit uh, what we are driving at, uh, at Roche. What would be maybe your one advice you would give us to focus over the next years? What would you say it was uh, super helpful in your organization and we might consider to do similar? I think one thing is fix the basics, which I think we all need to understand what are these. What does digital mean for you as an organization? Where do you want to focus? And how can you work together as one organization as one team, regardless to whom you are reporting. It's more about how do you create a meaningful impact and agree to standards, um, which might not be great, but might be better than having multiple optimized silos. Yes. And I think that is where I believe should be the focus of the future. So basically, let's say, again, I mean, killing the uh, silos and fostering collective leader leadership across multiple functions and change, as you said, I like it, needs to feel like change, right? It's Agreed. never easy. Yes. Thank you also for, for having joined our first uh, uh, podcast. Really a pleasure. I hope uh, you um, enjoyed uh, the session and please feel free to share any feedback, thoughts on the specific topics you are interested in or how we could improve uh, the podcast. Really looking forward to our next episode. And again, big thank you to Michelangelo uh, from Merck. Thank you very much. Talk to you very soon. Thank you.